So what is avascular necrosis of the femoral head? AVN is now becoming very common in post-COVID scenario after about a year and a half after the COVID steroids have stopped. We are now seeing a lot of avascular necrosis of the femoral head basically because it has a precarious blood supply. Majority of the blood supply comes from the neck and goes to the head. So the there are some retinacular vessels which come or the, from the capsule, joint capsule and a very about 5 or 10 percent of the blood supply comes from the artery of the ligamentum teres. The majority about 75 percent of the blood supply comes from the neck. So what is important is because they are all end arteries that's why it's steroids as well as other things like alcoholism and uh, uh, substance abuse, obesity and all these conditions lead to thrombosis of the end arteries and that leads to the head avascular necrosis. Secondly, the intracapsular fractures of the neck of the femur also are very susceptible to AVN later on because again this arterial supply is cut off when you have the fracture of the neck of the femur. So that's why we have AVN of the femoral head which is the commonest and the most famous AVN in the body. So what is your aim of MR imaging? Firstly, you have to identify the basic uh, gist of the talk today whether it is AVN or something else once you are sure it is AVN then you have to see the extent of the femoral head involvement that's for prognostication second is whether the acetabulum is involved because if the acetabulum is involved then the entire staging changes and the treatment that remains is only hip replacement you have to accurately stage the avascular necrosis any weight bearing areas are involved or non weight bearing areas are involved that is the central ones and the medial uh, the medial ones are the rarely progressive the lateral ones are the worst prognosis because they wear, bear the most weight that's why they progress faster and you need to have the total hip replacement in at an earlier stage How, is mr good enough avn versus normal sensitivity is 97% specificity is 98% and mr to differentiate AVN from other pathologies, it's about 91% sensitive. So still there is a lot of window. That's why we need to really look at the mimics before really calling it as an AVN. The sensitivity and specificity of AVN is important because if it's 98%, that means you can use it for screening. So now what do you use? Uh, how, which sequence will you use for screening? You will use only a T1 coronal. If you have a big population that you want to screen for AVN, for example, you have a big chunk of patients who've had a lot of steroids in COVID era, you want to know beforehand whether they have AVN before they actually present to you with hip pain, then you can use only one sequence that is coronal T1 and identify AVN because it's very high sensitivity of MR. The hallmark of AVN anywhere in the body is the double line sign. So you have to identify this double line sign on a T2 weighted sequence. It shows an inner high signal. The inner high signal is because of a hyperemic or an inflammatory response or the body tries to repair the border of the osteonecrotic focus. Now this is the osteonecrotic focus. So the border of the osteonecrotic focus is being repaired by the body. So that inflammatory response or high blood supply in that area gives rise to this high signal. Beyond that, you have a low signal or a sclerotic margin. That sclerotic margin is because rest of the body is trying to contain that area of osteonecrosis. It doesn't want the osteonecrosis to spread into rest of the femoral neck. So it creates a sclerotic margin. The central signal of the osteonecrotic focus is not included in the double line sign. Now that varies according to the famous staging which is called as the Mitchell staging. So what happens is first the marrow remains the same, that is it remains the marrow signal bright on T1, bright on T2. Then it is replaced by hemorrhage, then it is replaced by reparative tissue and ultimately when nothing happens it is replaced by fibrous tissue. So that we will see when we see the Mitchell staging. Now, do we really need to know this entire staging? Now, there are a lot of stagings available. There is Fikata and Arlet staging is the most famous, but it has been described originally on radiographs. So, the latest staging that has come up in 2019 revision is the ARCO staging. There is also Mitchell staging. There are hundreds of staging that is basically there on AVN of, necro AVN of the femoral head. The important thing is zero you are not able to see anything one you just start picking up 
two and three is the basic border line now two is where your conservative management will still work three everything has failed and three and above it goes for a thr so your differentiation bet uh, is between two and three now the the some stagings have uh, subclassified two as two a and two b now two basically represents a crescent sign 2A and 2B have been differentiated in which 2A shows less sclerosis and 2B shows the crescent sign. And 3 is crescent sign with a cortical collapse. So now let's understand this. What is happening in the femoral head in the osteonecrotic focus? Now osteonecrotic focus is blood supply is reduced in the femoral head. There is a borderline area which is the cartilage and the bone has separated by a subchondral bone plate. Now subchondral bone plate is the strongest portion of the femoral, uh, femoral head that is still keeping the fort in spite of the osteonecrotic focus below that. It will keep, it will uh, try to save the femoral head as much as possible but if the patient undergoes weight bearing or plays or does trekking or whatever he wants then what happens is that subchondral plate eventually collapses. So when it collapses it becomes stage 3. So when it collapses the patient goes for THR. Before the collapse, if you do a decompression surgery or ask the patient to be non-weight bearing, don't play sports, don't do excessive exercise and all of that stuff, till stage two, we can save the femoral head. So what is your aim as a radiologist is to try to diagnose it up to stage two. Stage three and beyond, MR anyway doesn't help. There are a lot of orthopedic surgeons who send cases to us saying that whether there is an AVN or not in a case of osteoarthrosis. Basically, it doesn't matter because osteoarthrosis and a stage 3 and beyond AVN is eventually going to have a THR. So whether it originally was AVN or not, it really doesn't matter. So now this is how it progresses. This is stage 2 already because there is an osteonecrotic focus, but you can see that the overlying, the subchondral bone plate black one is intact. There is no subchondral crescent. Now here you see that this is still on the left side, there is normal osteonecrotic focus, normal, sorry, no, osteonecrotic focus and a normal subchondral bone plate over here, which is black. On the right side, you can see that there is a crescent. This is, now beyond the crescent, what has happened on the left side, there is collapse. Now the crescent has disappeared and there is collapse on the left side. And this ultimately, the collapse progresses. So what will you have when you start imaging? You will first have an osteonecrotic focus with a subchondral plate which is intact. Beyond that, you will have a subchondral crescent. The plate is still intact. The shape of the femoral head is still normal. Beyond that, it collapses. There is flattening. But still, it is remain, uh, the osteonecrosis remains limited to the femoral head. Now, beyond the collapse, what has happened is the overlying articular cartilage in the initial stages will be normal. Beyond that, if the patient continues to bear weight, the cartilage also undergoes desiccation and degeneration and tearing or the, uh, thinning. Then it goes beyond into the acetabulum. When it goes into the acetabulum, you have again changes in the acetabular cartilage first, then the subchondral plate of the acetabulum, then in the subchondral acetabulum. So when you start seeing marrow edema and subchondral cysts in the acetabulum, the lesion has progressed very significantly and has gone and crossed the joint. This is the Mitchell staging. So this is very similar to what happens when there is any osteonecrosis anywhere. So first there will be a normal maintained signal of the marrow fat that is now replaced by blood because the blood is trying to come and replace the fat and trying to repair it. Beyond that when the blood doesn't repair it becomes fluid that it is becomes cystic. Beyond the cystic, the water also is taken up by the body and then it becomes fibrous. So it goes from A to D, similar to the progress that happens in the osteonecrotic head from fat to fibrous tissue. Then sometimes you can also have a subchondral fracture in the, now this is, this is how a subchondral fracture would look in stage 3. So as I said, what is the aim of MR imaging in AVN? Save the femoral head and not replace it. The AVN by and large is bilateral because it is caused by systemic diseases. When, it is when the AVN happens because of a fracture, intracapsular fracture of the neck, obviously it is unilateral. 
but when it happens because of a systemic disease, it is usually bilateral. So unilateral AVN, you need to think, is there any fracture or not? If there is no fracture, then think twice, is it really AVN? When this marrow edema is there and you see such osteonecrotic focus, the patient usually will present to you with pain. So marrow edema is equal to pain. Whenever marrow edema is there, the patient has pain. When there is marrow edema, uh, there is absence of marrow edema, then the patient does not have pain. That is, if you have AVN on both sides and you have marrow edema only on one side, then only that side will be painful, the other side will not be painful, in spite of it being on a higher stage. So marrow edema already, always correlates with pain. Second thing is marrow edema in the AVN does not go beyond the intertrochanteric line. So if it goes beyond the intertrochanteric line, again start thinking of mimics like osteoid osteoma, stress fractures, infections, osteomyelitis. Then second thing that is always, uh, almost always associated with AVN is the effusion. You can see that there is more fluid on the left as compared to the right side. But that is just an incidental finding. It's a reactive effusion. It does not indicate the presence of inflammatory arthropathy or an infection. So effusion is just because there is some body response to the osteonecrotic focus. It should not, the, it should not be confused with any other pathology. Now this is a patient on the right side, she has undergone a core decompression because originally his, uh, his AVN at that time was stage 2. But you see that in spite of core decompression, the subchondral collapse has happened. There is also erosion and destruction of the overlying articular cartilage along the femoral head as well as acetabulum. You have subchondral cystic changes in the acetabulum as well. So these things, even if you don't see very particularly uh, great image of the articular cartilage but you can surely say that the AVN has progressed because you are seeing subchondral cystic changes in the AVN and secondly you are also seeing larger osteophytes on the lateral margin of the acetabulum on the right side on the left side it is absolutely normal then this is Again, an AVN with transient marrow edema as well as effusion on the right side as compared to the left side. Note that the marrow edema does not cross the intertrochanteric line.